how to improve egg maturity and understanding what it is when you're in an IVF cycle. Hi friends, I'm Dr. Natalie Crawford. I'm a board certified OBGYN and REI. I'm a fertility doctor. And this channel exists so you can learn more about your body, your fertility, and how to advocate for yourself. So would appreciate if you subscribe, like, share, comment down below so we can spread more awareness about the importance of understanding your body and advocating for your own health. IVF is something that's so hard to go through and I get a lot of questions about it. I know that when you're gearing up for an IVF cycle, a lot of times we go in not sure what to expect. And I do have a whole playlist on IVF if you wanna do a deep dive. Today, I wanna to specifically talk a little bit about strategies to improve egg maturity, what egg maturity means, and understanding just this entire aspect of IVF. Because one thing I see so often is that people are doing the same protocol over and over again without anybody looking at the cycle to see if there should be any changes or anything that we can do better. When it comes to IVF, one of the things we are trying to do, and really one of the things we actually control, is how many mature eggs you're able to get, or at least is what we're shooting for. And if we're not getting as many mature eggs as we think we can, the question is, can we do better? Sometimes you're doing the best you can, but so often nobody's even looking or asking, and so you've got to understand this yourself. Important thing to understand when it comes to IVF, in you know, a one minute explanation, if we think about your ovary, my favorite analogy that you have all the eggs you're ever going to have in a vault inside your ovary, Every single month, you have a group of eggs that comes out of that vault. Each egg grows inside a follicle. In a natural conception or a normal ovulatory month, the brain sends out FSH or follicle-stimulating hormone, which works to get an egg to grow. As that egg grows, it matures and ovulates. The rest of the eggs die, and the next month, you have another group. The number of eggs you have each month does depend on a few different factors. Number one is your age. As we get older, there's less total eggs inside the vault, Therefore, you have less eggs available every month. Isn't that interesting? When the vault is more crowded or there's more eggs remaining, it sends out more every month. And when the vault is less crowded or has fewer eggs remaining, it sends out less every single month. There's other things that can impact how many eggs you have available in a given month, including if you've been ovulating recently, if you've been on any hormones, if you have any autoimmune disease, if you have endometriosis, if you've had chemotherapy or radiation in the past. So there's a lot more nuance to this than just how old you are. But you should understand how many eggs we expect for you. This is called ovarian reserve. Ovarian reserve is how many eggs you have left remaining, and there's no way for us to know that number. But we should be able to group in a category, normal, above average, very high, below average, low, critically low, undetectable. And these categories come from testing the eggs that are outside the vault in a single month. Understanding two things. One, that's a representation of what's inside, but it's not perfect. So if I'm counting the number of eggs outside the vault, and I know that the vault sends out more eggs when it has more remaining, I understand that this is a surrogate marker for how many I really have. And two, your body's not perfect. It's not going to send out the exact same number every month. There's some month-to-month -month fluctuation and variability of up to 20 to 30% cycle to cycle. So what you may count or expect can be different the next month and that could be normal. The biggest question is when is it not normal and when is it due to maturity? So what we're evaluating before a cycle starts is an antrofollicle count, that's an AFC, how many eggs do you have outside the vault in a given month? And number two, a blood test called AMH or anti-malarian hormone. AMH is made from the cells that surround all of the eggs outside the vault, lives in your body a little bit longer, so there's some more nuance to it, but more eggs inside the vault, more out. Higher follicle count, higher AMH. Based on those values, we should have an idea of how many eggs or range number that you might get based on going through IVF. And a lot of us say, for your age, this is average, your values are average, we expect this. Based on those, you should be picking your protocol. The protocol of IVF is trying to get all of the eggs that are outside the vault to grow because your body doesn't want to have more than one baby at a time. So if you're an average 29 year old, you might have 20 eggs available outside the vault and your body doesn't want to have 20 babies at one time. So it doesn't want to allow 20 eggs to get to maturity. So 
So what I'm asking it to do by doing this whole hormonal protocol is something it doesn't want to do. I'm asking for 20 eggs to get to maturity because I would like that. IVF success is determined mostly by how old you are and how many eggs you have. And I can't change your age. I can't change how many eggs you have. But if I can find the combination of medications that get all of the eggs that have been sent out from the vault that month to grow forward and get to maturity at the same pace, then I'm doing the best I can by that protocol. So the goal of the protocol is to get as many mature eggs as possible. Your body doesn't want that to happen. The way we get this done is with hormone management. So we're breaking up the brain ovary connection in order to achieve this. I like to think about it as suppressing and then stimulating the body. You can just stimulate coming off of a natural suppression. And this is when people do a cold start, a random start. They say, call with your period, come in and we'll start IVF. And you might go in and they do an ultrasound and you just start taking FSH shots. The stimulation medications are mostly FSH. FSH is food for the eggs. That is going to be your folistim, your gonal F. There's a combination FSH LH called Minipure that some protocols require you have some of, or some people need some of. And then sometimes you can have other add-ons. You can have human growth hormone or omnitrope. Some cycles can start with Clomid or Letrozole in them as well. That's generally more of a minimal stim approach with Clomid Letrozole. Sometimes it's to keep estrogen low with Letrozole if you have an estrogen sensitive tumor. So there's a little bit different situation for stimulation. But let's just use stimulation as mostly hormone shots of FSH because that's what it is. There's targets for what the eggs mature are based on size, but then the suppression can help us get a cohort that's all together. Since your body doesn't want to allow 20 eggs to all grow to maturity, in order to break that up, we have different protocols. And I like to think about starving the eggs of FSH for the right amount of time and in the right way prior to doing the stimulation is what can help us lead to a better cohort or group of eggs. So we think about maturity, we have one, the cohort, how many got into the mature range, to some of the nuances of what's specific for you. So choosing the right protocol is really important when it comes to egg maturity. Types of protocols. So you can have, as we said, a spontaneous start, where you just call in with your period. That by definition is a cycle called an antagonist, where you have an ovulation blocker. You can also lead into an antagonist ovulation blocker cycle with birth control pills, estrogen, or progesterone. You also have options for testosterone that can go on top before you do an antagonist cycle. And some of them can even use ovulation blockers. So you could use the antagonist twice. You also have Lupron, which can be used for suppression of FSH. And Lupron can be used before the cycle begins, before and during, in different doses. It can be used as a flare or a down regulator. These all mean different things. But let's just say different hormones to stop the brain from sending out FSH can be utilized for suppression. And suppressing the ovaries just the right amount, getting all the eggs hungry before you stimulate them can be advantageous in trying to get your eggs to maturity. Second is what is maturity? So a mature egg in IVF is typically one that's about 15 to 20 millimeters in size. That's different than in Clomid cycles, Letrozole cycles, natural cycles. Gonadotropins are different. Also, each mature egg should make about 150 to 200 picograms of estrogen. If you're on letrozole, that doesn't count. If you're taking medications with high levels of biotin, your estrogen may not be reliable. And estrogen doesn't always correlate with maturity because some small eggs can make a low amount of estrogen. But using those two values together is helping us try to make the judgment of when we have the most mature eggs. When it comes to maturity, the perfect egg that can be fertilized is called an M2. It's gone through meiosis too. The next level is called an M1. So an M1 is so close. It's gone through meiosis one. That's one that just needed a little bit bigger size, maybe a little bit longer trigger interval. So when I look at cycles, how many mature eggs did I get? Of the ones that are immature, how many were M1s? Those are close ones. What cycle changes can I make to get those? Either getting them to a bigger size or how many hours from trigger to retrieval? Was it 35, 35 and a half, 36? Number two, how many were degenerated? Those tend to be post-mature, over-mature. They got too big. And that can happen too. We're trying to get as many in the range as possible. And then how many were GVs or germinal vesicles, which are very immature. They're not even close. 
So I'm always looking at not just how many were mature, but how many were immature and what stage of immaturity when I'm trying to tweak my protocol for the next time. And those are questions you should ask. Importantly, you may not know egg maturity if you don't do ICSI. In ICSI, we strip the outer surface of the egg so we're able to see the maturity. If you're doing conventional fertilization, those outer cells called the cumulus are very important for the sperm to attach to, so you probably are not getting a mature egg report, just an egg number and then a fertilized number. If you're doing ICSI, we know how many are mature, whether you know it or not, so you should ask. Of the eggs retrieved, how many were mature? Of the ones that weren't, what was their stage? Were they M1s, GVs, degenerate? And that can help you ask the right questions for your next protocol. Hope this helped you understand a little bit about egg maturity. Ask your questions below and I'm gonna do some follow-up on specific protocol types. As always, you can get more information on the As A Woman podcast or follow along on Instagram at Natalie Crawford MD. Thanks, friends.